All right, guys, welcome to another lesson here. And today we're talking about beta and implied volatility when it comes to options premiums. And so this is going to be very important when looking at, you know, what type of volatility you can expect on a stock, specifically beta. But really the key here is that beta will be tied in with implied volatility. So they're basically in bed together. Um, the reason for that is because when you have a stock with a higher beta, which we'll get into the definition here in just a minute, um, but a stock with a higher beta will be more likely to move relative to the rest of the market. So um, that having a higher beta will therefore increase implied volatility, all else held equal, right? So the higher the beta, the more volatile the stock is, the more implied volatility will be baked in uh, to the options premiums. So let's get into this a little bit further. If I can get my thing to work, there we go. So definition of implied volatility. Implied volatility can be defined as the expected price move or likelihood of a stock either to the upside or downside. So a stock, for example, that is approaching earnings will have higher implied volatility because that stock is expected to make a large move. And so this is going to impact the options premiums, that second point. So stocks with high implied volatility typically have higher options premiums. Now in bearish markets, implied volatility will typically be higher and therefore um, higher options premiums as well. So when you, when you have a bear market, right, uh, stocks, let's say, you know, are going down rapidly, volatility is higher. Now, you can still see good bounces and stuff to the upside. That, that's why there's so much volatility, right? Because in a stable market, you know, you might have a stock that's gradually going up. So there's not as much implied volatility in that stock versus a stock that, you know, let's say the market just went down 20, 30 percent in the last six months. Um, implied volatility will be higher, which means you can make more money selling options because this sustained downtrend, right, it's been ongoing. And so investors, traders are expecting still a big move in stocks, right? Well, that implied volatility will be increased. And so really what it comes down to, that last point on the, on the list, implied volatility can be used as a gauge of market sentiment or uncertainty. And so implied volatility really... I mean, if, like I said, in a bullish market, is going to be a lot less than in a bearish market. The reason, once again, in a bearish market, you know, stocks are going down, people are fearful, the VIX or the volatility index will spike up, and that will also increase implied volatility versus a nice, stable, you know, uptrending market, not moving up um, too fast, right? I think what they say is that uh, stocks take the elevator on the way down, but they take the stairs on the way up. It, it, it makes sense, right? And so that also makes sense as to why implied volatility is lower because a stock is not expected to move, you know, let, let's say the market's not expected to do 30, 40% in a year, um, right, to the upside. But to the downside, we have seen that before in a year, right? We have seen the market crash 50%. Um, and I think in 2008 was one of those years. And so that does happen, right? So anyway, the next thing we want to talk about here, beta, right? So the first bullet point on the, on the list there, you'll see um, beta is a measure of a stock's total volatility relative to the overall market, typically the S&P 500. So you look at a stock, let's say, that has a beta of less than one, that stock will be less volatile than the S&P 500 versus a stock that is more than one, right? That stock will be more volatile than the S&P 500. So it's measured on a numerical scale with one as the baseline for uh, one as being equal with the market. So for example, a stock with a beta of 1.10 would be more volatile than the S&P 500 and a beta of 0.75 would move less than the index. So the higher a stock's beta, the higher implied volatility will be associated with that stock. And so a stock with a beta of 1.5, for example, would be expected to um, move more or have higher options premiums therefore uh, to compensate the options seller for the risk that the stock does make a big move to the upside or downside. And so you would expect to have elevated options premiums. I gave you an example when looking at um, the cash secured puts and you know covered calls about different stocks and volatility and the types of options premiums you can expect. Well, that all comes down to implied volatility. That all comes down to the expected move that the stock is expected to make. And so a stock with a beta of 0.75 right? Less risk of a big move. And so therefore, um, implied volatility will be lower. So there's less premium, right, to capture if you're the seller of the option. So take a look at, you know, an example of a low beta or high beta stock. 
I actually just looked at this, and so Palantir will be considered a high beta stock because it's you know 1.82 is that beta. Um, AT and T, right? Talk, right? <laughs> Not stock. Um, AT and T talk <laughs> has a beta of 0.6 or a low beta stock, right? So. Um, you know, when you look at the charts, and I can show you the charts as well, just as a refresher, like how much these stocks have moved, you'll see that Palantir, I think, had a high um, in 2020, around 45, um, I think it went public at or something around there. Now it's at $6 a share. AT&T has had its ups and downs. It is down right now, like down to 17. Um, they did a spinoff for Warner Brothers uh, Media. You know, there's been some different things, but the overall picture for AT&T is a lot less volatile. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, you'll see what I mean. But, um, you know, Palantir stock, you know, just as an example, once again, can move 10, 20, 30 percent on earnings. So that's going to be a stock with a lot of implied volatility. But what I also showed you in, you know, when I was doing the cash secured put uh, lesson, if you have not, you know, checked that out, then definitely look at it. And I think I discussed this in the wheel strategy as well. But essentially, you know, you look at the options premiums for a stock like Palantir and you can just see how much you're getting for a, you know, a relatively small capital commitment actually. So you can actually generate a good amount of uh, income for, from a pretty low, um, I, I would say, capital commitment. But the risk is that the stock makes a big move, of course. And so that's what you're being compensated for. But um, you know, before earnings are announced each quarter, you're gonna see options premiums increase because the expected move of the stock will likely be large, followed by a sharp decline in the price of the options after earnings. So. Um, you do see that a lot. And so people like often, they'll be long a stock, right? Or, or not a stock, but they'll be long an option against a stock. And they, you know, I've had questions like this asked when I worked at TD Ameritrade, um, you know, and, and I've heard other reps talk about this when I worked with them, about how people would call in and they would say, hey, my stock or my options, right? They just went in the money. Are there, you know, approaching being in the money, right? I, I, and these are people who are long options, right? They're not short the options like we're doing when we're selling options. But they're basically asking like, hey, why is my options premium going down? Well, often what you see is that before earnings, there's a lot of implied volatility baked into the price of those options. Well, after earnings, you know, the stock's already made a move, right? And so that implied volatility drops off like a cliff. And what happens then is the options premiums are less valuable or they're, they're less um, w worth a lot less therefore because the stock's already made a big move and so it's already been priced in and so that's why you see um, options premiums go down even if it's moving in the right direction as the trade that you have on let's say you're long a call um, and the stock does make the move you're expecting and yet those options premiums don't really go up like you were expecting right you were expecting them to increase in value well most likely it's because implied volatility saw a sharp decline because the event that everybody was pricing in, that big move has already occurred. And now you're starting to see that come down. So just something to keep in mind. Um, a stock like AT&T will still experience elevated options premiums before, uh, before earnings. I put before options, man. Um, before earnings, but to a much lesser degree than a stock like Palantir. So, you know, once again, it all just comes down to the beta and that's gonna be tied in with implied volatility and how volatile that stock is, how you know large that expected move is. But you're still gonna have elevated options premiums for a stock like AT&T, Verizon, Procter & Gamble before you know um, earnings come out, even though those are lower volatility or lower, lower beta stocks. And earnings are just one example. It could be like any expected news event, right? You're gonna see that elevated implied volatility. So uh, stocks with higher implied volatility will experience elevated options premiums. I know we just talked about that. Um, especially around uh, major material events, such as earnings, where traders are expected to see the stock price move in a big way. For options sellers, higher implied volatility results in more options premiums received, which is your max profit um, if you're the seller of the option, right? Um, so that's, you know, that's good, but you're taking the additional risk, right, that the stock will move against you. Beta and implied volatility are related in the sense that uh, all else held constant, the higher a stock's beta the higher the implied volatility for that stock can be expected. And you'll see I have in this sense, in this sense. Man, I've got a lot of typos in this presentation. That's all right, though. As long as you guys get the point, right? Um, so that last point, right? They're related in the sense that all else held constant. The higher a stock's beta, you know, we can expect higher implied volatility for that stock as well or to, for that stock to make a big move, not including anything else. But um, let's take a look at some stocks here, okay? Just a couple of them. 
I want to show you. As I was saying, like AT&T stock beta, right? 0.61, okay? Now, let's look at PLTR, right? Their beta is 1.81, as I was saying. Um, you can take a look at, you know, a stable dividend stock like Procter & Gamble. We can see what they're, you know, they sell a lot of household products like, um, you know, look, 0.34. So, you know, you would expect that if you're going to sell an option, there's going to be less premium associated with that option because, you know, look at the chart of Procter & Gamble, for example. We can look over the last six months how it's done. So, it's only done 7% in the last six months. Let's go over to see Palantir's chart and see how it's doing. Market's been down, right? It's down 39% in the last six months, okay? Um, you know, Coca-Cola, right? Let's see what their beta is. I forget off the top of my head. Uh, 0.54, okay? So pretty low. And when you're, you know, doing this, if you're doing the wheel strategy, you're selling options for passive income, it, it depends on the risk tolerance, right? I mean, if you're in retirement, probably going for a lower beta um, type, you know, stocks, lower volatility type stocks is going to help you out tremendously because you're going to be able to sell options without worrying about a massive move in the stock price. I mean, you still have to, you know, consider that obviously the stock can move against you, but the chance of that happening is lower, uh, you know, you're going to see like a massive move, like 20 or 30% uh, or something like that. So like, you know, Coca-Cola stock, right? Pretty much even. I mean, even though like the market's been down, um, it's still pretty much even for the, you know, uh, and you'll see that. So it's been trading sideways. Like this would be a perfect one. If you're looking to do the wheel strategy, I feel like right now, um, but that implied volatility is so much lower. And I'll give you, a, you know, an example of, I think Snowflake was uh, a stock that went public here. And you'll see it's been pretty volatile. I mean, over the last six months, um, you know, 240 down to 113. Um, we can look at the beta of Snowflake, 1.91, right? And it just shows you it's almost. So essentially what you're looking at here, and a good way to look at this, a stock with a beta of 1.91 is going to be nearly twice as volatile as the market. So they typically use the S&P 500 as the benchmark. So if we look at the SPY, the S&P 500 alone is down 13.26% over the last six months. So it gives you an idea, you know, if a stock is moving 30% in the last six months, well, that stock could have a beta of, you know, 1.8 or two even, you know, double the market. Um, so it just kind of shows you what to look for. And, um, you know, and, and you can factor that in, like, because if you're doing the wheel strategy, right, you're not actually buying these options, right? You're selling them. So you're not really, like, betting on the price. You, you get what I'm saying. Um, I, I don't even know what else to say on that. Like, what it comes down to is just how much in premium you get for those options and how volatile that stock is and how much risk you want to take. Because there's always risk no matter what. I mean, your risk in the case of you buy a call option or you buy a put option is the premium that uh, you know you would lose if the uh, stock didn't make the move you were expecting. But the risk, if you're a, the seller of an option, is greater. Okay, even though you're receiving the premium, and if you do it correctly, right, then you're gonna be just fine. But um, w really, what it comes down to is just understanding volatility, understanding beta, and then you can look at that and find stocks that hey. You know, they have a lower beta. Here's some dividend stocks too. I can maybe do the what's called the double income strategy with uh, dividend stocks and kind of go from there. So um, that's another lesson altogether. But nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, lesson here on beta and implied volatility. We'll be making more videos about um, this and more lessons coming up soon. So just watch for it there and uh, you'll see more options videos and, you know, trade examples and stuff like that. But um, let me know if you guys have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.